YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to another train with me. I like to do these on Tuesday evenings and it'll be different topics each week. And we've already decided on next week's topic, which I'll share with you towards the end of our training session. The goal of these is to give you all ideas and opportunities to ask questions about different training things. It could be anything. It could be tricks. It could be practical, whatever's on your mind. So let me know if there's a certain topic you wish we would cover, and we can do that for you here. Today, we are going to be working with my dog, Norby. He is a toy fox terrier, and he's actually fairly good at this, but he could definitely use some work. And so if you are training with me, it actually helps me because I'm actually going to train with my dog, too. So the idea behind this specific topic is many people work on their dogs coming when called, but then they don't actually like do this portion. And so I wanted to break it down for you all so that you could work on this skill alongside us. So what you're going to need, potentially, depending on your dog, is you're going to need a harness. Um, if your dog doesn't wear a harness, it's okay. Use their collar. So I have a cute little taco collar here. Uh, who doesn't love a cute collar? Let me just say. I am very picky, though, on what collars I pick. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things. So let me know as you have questions. I will check in periodically as we do the training together. And uh, what's also important to have, I forgot to tell you, is treats because we're all about positive reinforcement. So this training that we're going to do tonight is talking about catch me if you can to really teach your dog that being caught is a great game versus them running away. We really want dogs when they come to us that they're willing for us to pick them up or to hold their collar or to hold their harness and have positive associations with that. The alternative is your dog runs past you or runs by you and you can't get them. And that's just not safe. And we want to make sure that our dogs are safe when they get away from us because they inevitably will get away from us. So if your dog is already averse to being touched in certain parts of their body, be really mindful of their body language. I don't want you to have even more negative associations. So if you have an issue, make sure you post it in the comment section before you train alongside me because what I don't want to happen is you get bit or your dog has a bad time. This should be really fun for both of you. And you can get really creative on how you play the game. Now, while I like a solid recall, I don't recommend that you work your coming when called with the collar grab or the harness grab until the collar or harness grab is really solid, that your dog just loves you grabbing onto them. Because if you call your dog to you and let's say that their recall is really good and then you collar grab them and they don't like that, then you're basically punishing the recall. And we don't want any of that. We want come in when called to be a good thing. So what I'm going to do is first get him dressed because he's not wearing his equipment, obviously. Uh, you guys can do the same. And then all I'm going to do is show you how to do it. It's actually really easy. But if your dog doesn't like it, we all have to talk through some of the other problem solving things we can do ahead of time. So I'll show you. There's like the straightforward, let's go get it. And then I will show you uh, what to do if your dog is already kind of icky about it. All right, Norby. Hey, Norbs. Him and his blanket, I tell you what. But you got to have it in here. So, oh, that's way too big. That's way too big. That must have been brother wearing it. He likes his equipment. Uh, Panzer, on the other hand, he does not. So that's why we picked Norby tonight because uh, I wanted a really good demonstration for you. He's got a little demo dog. Norby. Norbs. Oh, you want to bring your blanket so everyone can see you suck on your blanket? All right, so I've got his collar. It's still kind of big, but we'll go with it. Oh, and my harness. So I put his harness on and the collar. That way I can show you both. I think it's very practical to teach your dog both a harness and a collar. Because what if they're not wearing their collar? Look at him. He's so sexy. What if they're not wearing a collar or what if they're not wearing a harness? I'm going to adjust it one more time so I can't resist. I can't resist it. A poorly fit collar. I know. Okay, so it's got tacos on it, and I love tacos. Okay, let's not do that. Thank you. Going to do unmentionable things on the camera. All right, good boy. You're so smart. I know. All right, so now that I've got him suited up, all I'm going to do is start 
grab it onto his collar and I like to go underneath and I'll back up a little bit from the camera in a moment, but I like to go underneath so that I am really not putting a lot of pressure on the dog's neck. I don't want to push here because that can make them lose their breath. So I want to just have a little bit underneath. And if your dog is averse to that, obviously don't do that, but just grab a little bit and then yes, and then give them a treat as you're doing it. So let me get some hot dogs here. I like to use a really high value. Ooh, he says, yes, very high value. <laughs> very high value reward, especially if your dog doesn't like this. And I want it to mean a lot. I want it to be like, yeah, grab my harness, grab my collar. Okay, Norby, you ready? You ready for the spaghetti? Oh yes, I am ready. All right, Oop, now you guys are way too low. Hold on, we gotta fix the camera. Always fix the camera so the peeps can see. Okay, you ready? There's no cue to this. I'm just gonna do it and then give him the reward. So he's like, I can do this. Yes, good. Yes, go all way. So notice he's backing up. I don't love that, so I'm gonna be more mindful. Yes, because he's telling me I don't really like that. Yes, good. Yes, good. And then you can add more pressure over time in different parts of the harness or collar. Yes, good. Now I'll pull him a little bit this time. So if I pull him, yes, good. And I want him to come with me. But no, I don't think so. <laughs> good boy. And I really want him to know that I want to play the game his way too. Yes, especially in training. Because they have opposition reflex. Oh, you think you're supposed to back up and spin? <laughs> they have opposition reflex. So if we don't teach them that when we tug on you to come with us, they may start offering us other things, and he thinks he's supposed to back up. That's why he's backing up. That makes a lot of sense. We haven't done that in a while. Yes, good. And then I really want you to become like more assertive with your handling so the dog like knows no matter what. Yes, good. That this is a good thing. And I think he's ba my guess is he's backing up because he thinks we're playing backing up games. Yes, good. They just don't know what game I'm playing. Yes, good boy. All right, I'll give you a break. Good job, honey. So the yes just marks what you did. I like, and um, a treat is coming. Slow human. If you have enough hands, you can absolutely use a clicker for this. So you're just going to click the moment that you grab and then deliver the treat. If your dog does not like this game, they're going to start backing up. They might give you a whale alive. They might freeze. They might growl. These are signs you need to stop and you need to make it easier in some way to make a better association with it. And I'm going to show you that next because I think it's important to know what if my dog doesn't like that? It's We want to listen to them. We don't want to punish them or have a bad experience. We want to make sure that they enjoy the game. Excuse you. Um, but that might mean taking steps back. So how I'm going to start this is we're going to pretend that nobody doesn't like this. And all I'm going to do is like place my hand. So let's say this is his body. I'm just going to place my hand close, but don't touch it. And I'll say yes to that. Wherever your dog will let you kind of approach, that's where you want to start. Even just moving your hand forward might be the starting point for your dog. And then yes, and then reward that. What we're looking for to know that we should move forward is that your dog is not moving away, not growling, not being stiff, that they're like, oh, please go ahead. Take my equipment or they just stand there, they're comfortable with it. That's when you know you can move a little bit closer or you can you know, barely touch their equipment. But you need to break it down into tiny, tiny little steps so that your dog loves the game. So let's pretend that Norby doesn't like this and I'll break that down for you. I'm gonna switch food hands, which might create some drama because my hands smell like hot dogs. You ready, kid? Norby. Mm, hot dogs, I love hot dogs. I free one. So we're gonna pretend he doesn't like it. Sit for a second. So I'm just gonna bring bring my hand here. Yes. So I'm not touching him. He thinks it's other things. Yes, good boy. It's hard when your dog knows a lot of stuff. Yes. <laughs> he thinks it's all kinds of other stuff. And then I make it to the point where I'm barely touching it. Yes. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Look, look, look. Nice. Yes. And notice I'm really gentle about it. Yes. That right. Oh, no. And I can try different places. Yes. 
And if your dog doesn't like it with equipment on, do it without equipment. Yes, good. And then you can work up to where you're grabbing their collar, etc. Good boy, now we have the last bit. Oh, good job, very nice, take a break. All right, so hopefully that was helpful to work through if your dog is not a fan of you touching their harness or their collar or even that particular part of their body. The last thing I wanna show you, and I'll, I can demo one more time with Norby what like the ideal scenario is, but uh, the advanced version is going to be, you need to take that off screen, sir. He likes to do unmentionable things off screen. Um, so, well, he'd like to do it on screen. <laughs> but what you wanna teach your dog is that you pulling and walking with them is a positive thing. So it, let's say that your equipment broke or they got out of the house and you can't carry them. They're a larger dog. Like Norbert could just carry them. But if they need to be moved from one place to another and you have a larger dog and they have equipment on, you wanna teach them that being guided is a good thing. We don't wanna create a negative association with that or that they back out of equipment, those kind of things. If your dog ever learns how to back out of equipment, they will never forget that. And so they will back out of equipment and you'll have to find better and better equipment so that they cannot. So let me show you that and then I'll go back and I'll review with you how to just start out if your dog doesn't have any issues with this. This is really great for puppies. Again, don't do come and then this. These should be worked separately. So you'll do your recall exercise. And then you'll do your collar grab as another exercise. And once both of them are strong, both going really well, then you can put them together in your training, okay? Not sooner than that, because you could have one punish the other, and we don't want that. Oh, he says, I'm available again. All right, so ideal scenario is your dog comes with you. I don't know how often I've even done this, to be honest with you. <laughs> Norby, you ready? Look. I got Snickies. Oh, I love Snickies. Good job. Good job. Okay. Obviously, I have food, so I can help with that, too. Good job, right here. All right, so I'm grabbing his harness, and I'm taking a step. And if he comes with me, there's lots of pressure there. I'm going to wait and see if he comes with. He's like, what the heck are we doing, Mama? Good boy for checking in. So what I'm waiting for is that he shifts his weight towards me. And I'm going to get lower. It's uncomfortable for my back. And I still have the pressure. He's checking in. He's like, I don't really know what we're supposed to be doing here. And yes, good. So that little shift, I'll take it. So I'm waiting for him. I'm not luring him with food. I have food present. So he pushed back. Good boy. <laughs> I love that he's offering me eye contact. That's always ideal. So I'm going to have to lure him a little bit because he's like, I don't know what we're doing. Good boy. Okay. Yes, good boy. So just, look. yes, good. So see how that got him where I wanted him to go? Yes. Yes, good. So I want him to go with the pressure. He's pushing against it. Good boy. He's like, I checked in. Yes, good, I'll take that. So just a little bitty bit. So I thought, I thought that he was going to go, go ahead. I thought he was going to just come with me because we've worked on leash pressure, but clearly I need to work more on just equipment pressure and my hand. I'm going to do some more, kiddo. Let's try it again. So I've got his, I prefer a harness if I can. Obviously, I want to teach both, but I don't want to put a lot of pressure on his neck. There's no, no snacks in there. That's it. All your hands smell delicious. So pressure. Notice I'm not nagging him. I'm not like constantly like pulling back and forth. I'm just adding some pressure. He's pulling back. I'm gonna target him. Yes. A little pressure. Yes, I took, he took a step. Yes, good. I am not trying to move him. I'm waiting for him to move. There's a difference. I'm not about forcing my dog to do stuff unless it was 911 and this isn't 911. This is training. So in that example, my goal was just to take his collar and walk him along. He said, no, no, I don't believe in that today. So no problem. I waited him out. Didn't really go that way either, and he was confused. So all I did is I put a little treat in front of him, and then he walked forward or moved. Even if he shifts his uh, body and shifts his weight, I will accept that, and then I'll reward that, and then we'll keep working on it. So it's definitely something I even need to work on, um, and that's the goal of these. I don't want to show you, like, 
perfect videos. That might be something more on my channel that we've edited to make it look really good, but it's still legit. Like it's still reality. I just sometimes want to show you the best. And here I can show you what really happens behind the scenes so that you can see if I struggle, you're also going to have a struggle. Nobody's perfect. But what do I do to make it better? How do I help the dog, right? So I'm going to go back. Oh, let me see what you guys are saying here. Make sure. Oh, good. I'm glad that you're enjoying the tips. Thanks, Dakota, for tuning in. And you're in Florida. I wonder what your weather's like because it has been weird storms here. Um, and I'm guessing the same for you. So I'm going to show you one more time the beginning steps if your dog doesn't hate it already. And just getting your dog to be comfortable with you touching their equipment and kind of grabbing it. And then I want you to progress to the point, like I did in this last little segment with uh, Norby, is adding pressure and trying to get him to walk with me. You can also work on yielding to leash pressure with a leash, obviously. Uh, that's a really good one to do for dogs who like to pull on their leash when they're walking. And that's something I have worked on with Norby, but I ha clearly haven't worked on him with just equipment. So we need to work on that. So I'm glad we're doing this. Oh, he says, I'm ready again. I'm ready. As soon as I open the hot dogs, he's like, well, hello. We'll get some freebies, kiddo. All right. And I'm using hot dogs because dogs love hot dogs, but I'm out of homemade treats. I got to make some more treats. Are you ready? <gasps> Are you ready? Oh, yeah. You sign that. Are you ready? Okay. So I'm just going to grab equipment. Yes. He's already kind of resistant. He's like, remember that game we were playing? I don't like it very much. Yes. Good. I'm going to do the collar. Yes. Good. You're so smart. Go oh, get it. Yes. Good job. I'll grab other places. Yes. Good job. And of course, like if you have a smaller dog, you want to teach them to be picked up and that kind of thing too. Yes. Good job. And I don't want it to look like all pretty and perfect. I want it to be like if somebody else was grabbing my dog, I want him to be cool with that. Yes. Good job. Because, you know, other people may not be as kind. Yes. Good job. Got a proof for those things. That's going to spin for us and reverse. Down. Out. Nice. So just some bonus things. Good boy. You're okay. Bring it off. <laughs> He's such a good boy. Um, all right. So let me check in with you guys. Hot and rainy in Florida. I believe it. It's super humid here. Like, I'm okay not going out there right now, even really early in the day. Uh, kind of sucks. I hear you. <laughs> Uh, also, it's hurricane season, and you get at least one every year here in South Florida. I believe that, too. Uh, and whatever you get, we end up getting some of it here in Georgia. So I feel you. And that can be really challenging. Like, what do I do with my dog? I actually have a video for dogs on a rainy day, and I bet you can utilize that because you're going to have lots of weird weather days there. So this is what I have for you today. I really want you to work on this a little bit every day. Just make it fun. Make it part of your daily training routine that when they have equipment, you just play this little game, make it positive. If you have questions in the future, please let me know. Next week, we all voted the previous week that we were going to work on some crate skills. I believe that crate training is a life skill that every dog should know. Yes, there are some dogs who cannot be contained. I get it. I've worked with some of those dogs. But I want to show you a variety of crates next week. So I'm going to haul a bunch of crates up here. And then we're going to work on the different components of it, whether your dog has never been crated or you're working through crating in new locations. Obviously, I'm not going to move locations in a live. But I want to show you some fun little games you can do. I got some ideas from other trainers as well. So I'll share those too. And if you guys need anything or have any topics that you want, just let me know. We are publishing videos every Thursday. This coming Thursday, it should be a separation video. So talking about separation anxiety and how to help your dog cope with being left. So thank you guys so much for checking in, and I will see you guys soon.